Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit um, about how we can score our models um, on our training data. And um, scoring them is going to involve learning some new metrics and terminology. Uh, it turns out there's different kinds of errors and um, and if sometimes we'll, we'll care more about uh, one kind of error than another, uh, we might want to use different metrics to deal with that case. Um, so for this I have some really simple dummy data. Uh, basically I have this data frame um, that has an X column and the X column is a number and then the Y column is a, is a Boolean and it's true whenever X is positive and false when it's negative. Okay, so not much data there. And, um, and just for simplicity, I'm kind of breaking it into the first half and the second half. I wouldn't normally do this, right? Because maybe the data is not shuffled and maybe I'm kind of getting very different data in the two halves. So this is just trying for an example. So there I have it, I have my training data my test data down here and, um, and if I want to try to figure out what is the relationship between y and x and then uh, measure uh, the model's understanding of that relationship um, I'm going to use some sort of scoring function right so I'm going to do this with a logistic regression um, remember this is not really a regression it's actually a classifier right because I have this categorical data that I'm trying to predict and so I'm going to train one of those and then I want to score it so First step, right, is I'm going to say LR equals logistic regression. Great. And, um, and then I'm going to say LR dot fit. And when I'm fitting, let me actually just try to run this. Uh, once I run it, I can actually hit shift tab and, and get a hint. Um, I have to give it the X data and the Y data. And so I'm going to give it both those things from the training data first. And so I'm going to say training data, and um, and then the columns I want are just x, and then the thing I'm trying to predict is just the y value, just like that. And then after I do that, I can uh, basically uh, run a command that's very similar, and that command is score. I can evaluate how well it does on the test data, and I get uh, 0 0.75. Um, so what is this score function doing? Um, it turns out it's a shortcut, and, um, and I'm just trying to show you a little bit in the documentation what it's doing. If I head over here, I see that the score function for the logistic regression is giving me the mean accuracy. And if you look at other estimators, um, they might be doing other kinds of, uh, using other metrics for the scoring. Okay, so mean accuracy, um, so that's the default here, uh, but it turns out there's lots of different metrics we could use. And so if I go to the metrics page for um, scikit-learn, I can see that, hey, there's a whole bunch of um, metrics here related to classification, uh, clustering, which we haven't talked about yet, and then um, a whole bunch related to regression as well. And so the one I'm using right now, the default, is that accuracy score, right? You saw that, how it's saying here, that we're um, just getting the accuracy. And accuracy is very simple. It's well, what percentage of the times um, did we get it right? And so I certainly could have, instead of using that score function, I could have used this one myself. And I think that's a good thing to do right now, because once you understand how to use this manually uh, without the shortcut, then we'll understand how to use these other functions as well. Okay, so I can see this is in the metrics um, submodule. And so when I head back here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, uh, and this was that page I was just on, I am going to say from uh, from sklearn.metrics import accuracy score. Okay, and, um, and let me just run that. And when I call accuracy score, I hit shift tab here. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, what are the true values and what did my model predict? Okay, and, and so there's different ways I could do that. I mean, I could say, well, the true values are A and, and B, uh, but I actually predicted A and C, and it turns out if I do that, well, I'm just 50% right, right? So this was my actual values and my, um, and my predicted values. Um, so let me actually try to get these uh, from up above, right? So before I was trying this score thing, um, and then I was trying to give me my X values and my Y values, and, and so I'm gonna pull pieces from this, um, the first piece I'm going to do is I'm going to actually figure out what the predicted values are. So those are going to be the predicted values. And I actually have to call predict here instead of score, right? When I'm predicting, 
I'm not giving it any y values, right? Predict tells me what the y values are. And, um, and then I also have to have my actual, right? And my actual was just the second piece from before on that column. So, so maybe actually, let me just do this. I'm gonna say, let me look at the actual values and the predicted values um, as a list. Okay, and I can see the actual were true, true, false, false, uh, but I'm actually getting true, false, false, false. And so the second one is the error, right? So I'm gonna be wrong 25% of the time. And so accuracy is actually gonna be 75%, um, which is what we saw before. And we're gonna see it here too, when we actually pass in uh, these two things. I pass in the actual values and those predicted values. Right, so I'm gonna get that 75%. Okay, now, so that works fine, uh, but there's gonna be cases where we don't wanna just know how often we're right, but we wanna know about, um, uh, you know, about what kind of mistakes we're making, right? So for example, um, what, let's imagine different things that this Y column might be. Um, let's say that this Y column means it's a good investment. Maybe it's um, for a stock or something. Um, I don't need to know about every good investment, uh, but if I have some system that kind of tells me like, hey, these are some good investments and it's always right, and it doesn't tell me about every good investment, that's a pretty good system. Um, in contrast, maybe this is telling me, um, I don't know, is somebody contagious for COVID-19 or whatever, right? And in that case, um, it's much safer to make the mistake of saying they are contagious even though they're not. So there's different kinds of errors, false positives and the false negatives. And so there's a lot of metrics based on that. And uh, the simplest place to start is with something called um, a confusion matrix. And a confusion matrix um, shows the categories that things actually are, and then how they mistakenly get classified as other things. And so just like before, just like we have an actual and a predicted list, and we have a confusion matrix, we're gonna do the same thing. So imagine I had pictures of animals, and um, and you know I had four dogs, three cats, and two mice. And um, but then I have some machine learning system that's looking at those pictures, and is maybe predicting these other things. Um, what I could do is I could um, create a confusion matrix uh, using Scikit-Learn. Right, this is also under metrics, just like accuracy score. And so I can create one of these, and um, and just like with the accuracy score, I can uh, put the true values and then the predicted values or something like that. So I'm going to say actual and predicted, and um, and this is a little bit confusing because um, each one of these values is kind of showing us how many uh, categories fall into like a specific actual category and a predicted category. And um, it's not really clear to line it up, right? Well, is, is this first row dog or is it cat? And so what people will often do, right, is that they'll say labels like this and um, just to control the order. order. So for example, maybe I want to say like um, cat, uh, dog, uh, mouse, just like that. And um, and then if I pass in these labels, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different, right? Whereas if I say dog, cat, you can see these numbers switched a little. And, and another reason for this, besides just controlling the order, right, so that makes sense, is that I could, um, you know, maybe there's things that uh, I know exist, but didn't even show up in the data, right? There's no horses, right? Um, so So let me actually, to really kind of talk about what these numbers mean, I think it'll be a little easier to put in a data frame. And, um, and so I'm gonna put this in a confusion matrix here. And now let me put this in a data frame, a pd.data frame, confusion matrix. And, and when I'm creating a data frame from this, both the index and column labels are going to be the same, right? So I'm gonna have, have it just be like this. And, and so when I'm looking at this confusion matrix, what does it mean? So well, the row means what it actually is, and uh, the column is going to be what it got classified as. Right, so I can see in this right that there's four dogs, and um, of those four dogs, it correctly classified three of them as dogs, um, but one of the dogs was mistakenly uh, identified as a cat. Okay, it looks like there are three cats in the system. Two of them were correctly identified as cats, and one was considered a dog. 
Um, and then I can see other things here, like, well, the system's really good at mice, right? It always correctly calls the mice and doesn't mix them up with anything. And, um, and so this is useful, right? When I have a list time matrix, I can see what ways um, the classifier is confused. Hence, it's called a, a, um, you know, a confusion matrix, right? It's showing me how the model is confused, right? Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Now, uh, it's very common that we'll be having these uh, confusion matrices where the classes, instead of being, um, you know, different animals, it might just be true and false. That, that would be for a binary classifier where I just have these true and false values. And so let me actually go back to what I had before, right, when I was computing this um, accuracy score. And uh, let me create a confusion matrix here. And, and maybe I'm just going to copy some of this uh, down here. I'm just going to grab this. And uh, in this case, the labels are false and true. And it doesn't do anything. Okay, so I have these different categories. And just like before, I think it's going to be helpful to put this in a, in a data frame, right? Uh, I'm going to put a data frame here just like that. And so here, again, the row is telling me what it actually is. And then uh, the column is telling me how those got, got classified. And ideally, in a perfect world, right, everything will be on the diagonal, right? That means um, uh, there were no mistakes made. There was no confusion. Okay, so I have that. And, um, and, and it turns out there are special names for each of these four uh, values. And so I'm just going to go through this quickly. Um, the, the top left one, actually, let's start with the bottom right. So if I go to, uh, if I go to, let me put this in a date, actual data frame. Uh, so that's going to be my confusion matrix as a data frame now. Okay, and um, and if I go iloc one one, that's going to be that bottom right. That's going to be called true positives, and you're going to practice kind of remembering these. These words are important terminology, right? So I'm going to do this. And then if I had been smart with this example, I would have made sure all these numbers were different so we could more easily identify, right? And, um, and then the other number is on the top left. And those are true negatives, right? So true means that, that the model is doing the correct thing, right? So in this case, I have uh, a one. You know what I should really do is I should do it like this. True positives negatives right people often abbreviate it this way and then there's the mistakes right the mistakes are false right so I'm gonna say false and false and um, and so what are these called the false positives well where, where are those so false positive means that in this column right and so it should be false right that's what the, it actually is in the data uh, but the, it gets classified as true, right? So, so what does that mean? I, that means I'm in row zero, column one, and then the opposite down here, right? Sometimes uh, it actually is true, but the model says it's false. That's a false negative and um, false negative, just like that. Right, so these are the four different ca uh, cases I'd have. And a lot of the statistics we're going to be looking at in the next video are combinations of these and I'll be kind of talking more about why those are meaningful.